Hello everyone, we're going to look at three ways to get MIDI information into your DAW, which I'm using Cubase at the moment. So, first way, I've set my locators here, so from bar 1, I've just pressed left click in this ruler area at the top, dragged it along to bar 5. That's going to give me an area which I'm going to work within, so it's going to go from bar 1 to the end of bar 4. So and if I've got it on a loop, that will keep going round in a loop. Okay, so the first way we're going to look at is manually inputting the MIDI information. So, first thing we need to do is make a MIDI, um, a MIDI instrument. So, in Cubase, we've got these zones. So, can you see here I'm on the right-hand side zone, I'm under media, and I've got some synths set up here. So. I can go to the one one of the ones we used in the last video, which is over here. I can left click on it, drag it into the left zone, and let go. And it will create it for me. And we've got a synth. And you can do that with anything. So you left click on it, drag it into the left zone, and you've got yourself a synth. Another way of doing that, if you haven't got the zones there, so perhaps an older version of Cubase, right click in this left zone and add VST instrument and again he's there or you've also got the plus sign here at the top and you can choose instrument and do it that way and add track okay so we've made ourselves um, a MIDI synth so whatever we input into Cubase now is going to trigger that synth so we'll be able to audibly hear it okay so manually doing this, so you see here I was discussing earlier, we've sort of highlighted this bar 1 to the end of bar 4. I now need to double click in that area. The reason being, it gives you a sort of a blank canvas in order to um, edit something. Because if you haven't got anything there, we haven't got anything to add into the piano roll to edit. So this has given us a blank area. So now if I double click again, it brings up the piano roll. And now there's a few ways we can get the pen tool. One way, we can right click and get the draw tool. We've got it at the top here as well. Or we can, sorry, click eight, click the wrong key. So we got right click, get the draw tool, we've got it at the top, or we can click eight on the, um, the QWERTY keyboard. Okay, so manually inputting these. It's a case of left clicking and drawing the information wherever you want it. Now, the one problem we've got with this is it fixes the velocity. So that's how hard you actually hit a key. And as we're humans, when we play a guitar or we play piano, we never hit the same key exactly the same. So what you would have to do with this is control D let me do it a few times so you can see it we can actually manually change the velocity at the bottom here and if you wanted to change that on individual notes that's absolutely fine so here's our chord A C and E if I wanted just to bring the E down on the third I can actually use that velocity tool to do that and that will make it sound more human when you play it so it won't sound quite so robotic okay so that's our first way of entering MIDI information, that is to set the locator at the top, double click to make a blank canvas in order for us to edit, double click on that, brings up the piano roll, we can expand this out, and we can input I'm for inf information. So that's manually inputting the information using a mouse. Now, the next one is using a USB keyboard. This is one I picked up secondhand for, I think it only cost me about £20. It's quite old, but it doesn't make any difference. It's USB-A. It's got the keys I need. I'm quite limited on my keyboard skills, so having that quite small keyboard's fine for me. So that hooks up through USB-A. As soon as you load Cubase, well, in fact, from I think Cubase, it may be Cubase 10 or 9.5, I can't remember. You don't even have to load Cubase. You could have Cubase loaded, plug in a, um, a USB keyboard, 
and it will find it and you can play. But on earlier versions of Cubase, you have to actually reload the software once you've plugged the keyboard in. These are plug in place, so they don't require any software. Okay, so that's using a USB keyboard. So if I give it eight clicks. we've got our same A minor chord. Now, I can double click in here and it will look almost identical to the chord we had before. The only differences are, it's actually written this MIDI information, the um, velocity changes in for me because I didn't hit all the keys the same, so that's quite cool. Um, as you can see here, when I played it, I played it slightly behind the beat, but if I press Q for quantize, it'll put it into time for me. So I'm going to do a whole video on quantizing, but as a quick tip there, you've got Q for quantize. So that's using a USB keyboard. There's other features on a USB keyboard which are quite cool, so we'll have a look at those at some point as well. Now, the last one is using your QWERTY keyboard. If we do Alt-K, and that brings up our keyboard. And now you can see here's our um, QWERTY keyboard doesn't matter if you're on a laptop or um, a desktop computer. And we can actually play the chords in there. Now, you notice that was quite low in pitch. You've got these along the bottom, which are changes the octaves. So I've brought that two octaves higher. Maybe I'll go in between the two. I think that was about, that was where we were before. Okay, let's try it. So if I hit record now, and we've imported our MIDI information. Now, that also fixes velocity, so we're gonna to have to do the same thing as we did when we drew in the information with the mouse. Now, another quick tip with this, can you see I, well, I intentionally did it, but I usually pay out of time anyway, but um, I played it slightly behind the beat, because now, if I press the Q to quantize, it's not gonna do anything, because it's playing the keyboard still. So. Whatever you do, if you're using the keyboard, the QWERTY keyboard, as your music keyboard, always remember, after you've recorded a passage of music, click off it. You don't want it even running in the background, because if it's running, you can't use any of your shortcuts, which that keyboard is using for music, because it will just play the note. Okay, so now I've clicked off that. If I press, if I press the Q now, it will actually put it in time, apart from I played it so far behind the beat, it's pushed it to the wrong beat. So all I've got to do for that, under my quantize, which is here, the quantize panel, the Q, I'll click it to quarters and press Q now. And there you go. It's because I had it set it to eighths. We'll do that. We'll look at that in more detail as well. But one last thing. Remember what we said when we used the um, QWERTY keyboard to input information. If I just control D, and make a few of those. Can you see here, it's fixed velocities again. You can see it changes color as the velocity, the actual MIDI information. So what I would perhaps do, if I recorded a chord sequence using that, the, the keyboard, I would perhaps then go through and alter some of these notes. So make some, just humanize it a bit. And you can do that to the whole chord by highlighting the whole chord and bringing it down and up or you can choose each individual note. So there are three ways of inputting MIDI information. But remember first, you've got to add a VST instrument. So there's a few ways of getting that. So it's the left zone, dragging it in, or there's the add button, or there's right click in that left zone. So you can use a, a USB MIDI keyboard. We can use a QWERTY keyboard, or if you didn't want to use any of those, remember you've got to set the locators at the top, double click, double click again, brings the piano roll up, and then it's a case of getting the draw tool, which is right click and adding the draw tool, or coming up to the top here, or pressing eight on your um, your keyboard, and that one, and then we can draw in the information. Okay, so there are three ways. Good luck.